so I can stand on the side. Hey, right there. All right, great. So first of all, I wanted to ask you about uh, Representative McCarthy's new position. What do you think about that? Well, obviously, I think it's a good thing for California. Uh, when you have someone in that position, I think a lot of people don't appreciate uh, the importance of that uh, position when it comes to negotiating and things uh, that get passed through Congress. When we negotiate with the Senate, the, uh, the, pre uh, the majority leader is there at the table, obviously, with the Speaker, uh, but also the setting the calendar, making sure that items uh, come to the floor and making sure that when they come to the floor that most people uh, agree to them. And having a voice from the Valley here, like Kevin McCarthy in that position, is, is a good thing for us. A lot of people said that the reason Eric Cantor lost that bid was um, he didn't have a strong uh, opinion on immigration reform. and. It was just back and forth. Do you think that McCarthy will be doing better on that point? Well, as far as specific issues, I, I don't think that Eric Cantor lost just for that reason. I think there's a lot that goes into a person losing or winning a race. Uh, to try to pinpoint it on any specific issue, I think, is wrong. Um, as far as Kevin, Kevin's been pretty clear on some of his positions, and we're going to continue to work with him to make sure that whatever is done is done to the benefit of the Valley. And on that topic, immigration reform, President Obama just spoke about that. He's saying that uh, the House of Representatives, they are not doing enough and that he's going to take some executive action. What do you think about that? Well, obviously executive action is bad for a lot of reasons. Uh, the purpose of the legislative branch is to openly debate a piece of legislation. And if it's openly debated, uh, it allows the input of the communities. Uh, there's 435 members of Congress. And when we go through the process of debating this, having a member of Congress uh, in the debate and having that voice, just like myself, I had a community coffee here last week. I have teletown halls. People have access to me, but they do not have access to the president. So one person sitting in one house passing a piece of legislation is dangerous because it's not going to cover all aspects that need to be covered. So it's a really dangerous place to go. And that's why we have the legislative branch, is to make sure that people are represented and laws are passed that are beneficial to all. And uh, if the President's going to decide to take this route, I think that's going to be hurtful to everybody. I do wish this, the House would act and start to pass legislation. There has been some that have passed, but there needs to be more. And so I've obviously been an advocate for immigration reform. I'm going to continue to be an advocate for it, and I'm going to continue to work uh, to make sure that we carry out our responsibilities as a legislative branch and pass these bills. Have there been any talks between you and the Gang of Aid? The Senate has already passed it, but has there been any? You know, there was a Gang of Aid in the House, and I did work closely with a few of them before that Gang of Aid broke up. Um, as far as new people out there pushing, or not even really new people, a lot of the same people are still the same people acting on immigration reform. There is a lot of talk, there is a lot of push to make sure some legislation comes forward. Uh, the majority leader and the, the old majority leader, Eric Cantor, and the transition now to Kevin McCarthy has slowed down some process, progress right now in the House, but I expect us to still continue to push uh, once things get settled. What have you heard from your constituents regarding that? You know, for the most part, uh, my constituents are very supportive of seeing something done. I think they want it to be fair. They want it to be respectful of those who have tried to follow the laws. Uh, but they also want to make sure that we resolve this in a way that doesn't put us in the, uh, in the same position 20 years from now. I mean, you can't pass uh, amnesty. You have to pass a program that helps future flow, resolves the, fi the situation we have today, and also protects American workers uh, at the same time. And so that's why it has to be uh, something that covers all those aspects, and that's why I've been supportive of Comprehensive. And what do you think about the humanitarian crisis that has been our main focus now? Well, the humanitarian crisis that's going on along the border is obviously something very sad uh, that has to be addressed. And that is something that's obviously uh, come around because of uh, a lot of the actions that the president has taken, but at the same time, uh, the lack of direction that, uh, that the Congress has taken as well. We have to make sure that we have clear, defined laws that work and that uh, prevent things like this from being uh, seen as an option. Uh, and I think that if we did take an active role in fixing the immigration system in general, it would have a much larger role uh, in fixing that uh, issue as well. Uh, it's something that has to be resolved, obviously, and with a bunch of kids showing up at our border, uh, it's a very sad situation, uh, but we're going to do our best to try to resolve that in a humanitarian way. Uh, President Obama did mention just now um, part of the reason the House of Representatives have been able to pass this is because there's that um, division between the Tea Party members and moderate conservatives. Do you agree with that? You know, one of the original Gang of Eight is Raul Labrador, uh, who uh, actually ran for majority leader uh, with the support of the, uh, that wing of the, of the party. and. 
there are aspects across the board of people who understand the immigration system is, uh, is broken and want to fix it. So I think the president is exaggerating when it comes to that. And as far as the, the water crisis here in California, uh, what have been some of the steps that you guys have been looking at? Well, obviously, uh, H.R. 3964 was passed off the floor back in February. The Senate passed their bill a couple weeks ago, and now we've been talking with the Senate to come up with a compromise that works to help solve this problem. Uh, the talks are actually ongoing. Uh, we have been meeting uh, with the Senate, our Senate counterparts, and uh, we're doing our best to come up with a solution. As far as short-term solutions, if our bill had been passed back in February and signed into law right away, uh, we wouldn't be in the mess we're in today. Uh, the best we can hope for now is preventing uh, next year from being this bad. Um, and as far as elections, uh, so you're running up against Amanda Renteria. Mm -hmm. what, what are you looking forward to in that election? What are well, we're going to continue to work hard and do everything we're supposed to be doing. I've been representing the district now for about a year and a half, and uh, I think I've done a really good job of, of reaching out and talking to voters and representing them uh, the, the way they'd like to see me do so. Uh, and the numbers that happened uh, in the primary the already, I think, are pretty evident to that. Uh, but we're going to continue to work really hard, continue to have our community coffees, our teletown halls, and just our out outreach program in general to stay in contact with the community so that they know who I am and what I'm doing for them. And uh, we'll hope for the best. All right. Do you have anything to add? Oh.